And whose team is this? Is this your team or is this your daddy's team? Thanks for listening to the Dad Mode Podcast, common sense parenting in a politically correct world. Here's your host, Andy Carlson. Welcome back to the Dad Mode Podcast, Common Sense Parenting in a Politically Correct World. I'm your host, Andy Carlson, at Andy Carlson Show on the Twitter machine. I'm a father, and I have no idea what I'm doing, but hey, you are neither there, buddy. So let's try and learn something together today. Website is dadmodepod.com, Twitter at dadmodepod, or just use the hashtag dadmode, and we'll get all up in your business. Speaking of business, um, I have no segue for that, but Nick is he's back. Yay, glad to be here. Now, a lot of people thought that you died. Because you, cause you keep posting on Twitter that I died. <laughs> <laughs> Dick. Except, it, why would people believe that? I mean, uncles don't die. Uh, people all die eventually someday. Uh, Me, um, of course, I will sooner because obviously the heart condition and the severe obesity, but that's and, for another day. And the, the long family history of getting hit by a bus. It's genetic. <laughs> my my great grandfather Silas hit by a bus <laughs> a in 18, bus. 1898. There wasn't even a bus back then, but it happened. <laughs> uh, all right, so Nick is back in uh, uh, in the house, and hey, if you want to support the show, just tell a friend about the show. Nick's my friend. I told him about it, and now he's telling all of his people. He's disseminating information about the Dad Mode podcast, and also Amazon Baby Dad Mode Pod dot com. Uh, click through our Amazon banner, just bookmark it, and everything you buy, just write it Amazon. Do it through our banner. I will get a little taste. Nick, what's the next thing you're buying from Amazon? I am saving up for a PlayStation 4. What? I know, right? You're just going to use that as a coaster. No, I... I and a Blu-ray player. Ex- okay, uh, yes, Blu-ray player, yes. I mean, my, my Blu-ray player works fine, but, you know, I kind of want to... You know, I'm a gamer. You and I have played games before, and I usually play old school games. But you know, um, I kind of want to dabble in the newer, newer games. Hey, you know, it's really stupid. Uh, I can't tell the difference between DVD and Blu-ray. I, I I probably could if I looked really close, as I'm sure there's a stark difference. But I, I don't really care. Well, you can save yourself a lot of money because you know DVDs are like a nickel now. Now I, I'm trying to think. The last time I actually bought a DVD. Because, like, if I ever buy a movie, um, and I usually don't because I really don't care because you know, we got Netflix and we got Amazon Prime and we got Hulu and Sling TV and all that stuff. But it's just like, uh, oh, oh, I think what it was. Oh, The Town. I, I think I bought The Town on DVD like two years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's how I roll with DVDs. Oh, by the way. um. Before you know, tangenting off before I actually get into the topic for today, it's did you see the the meme for Star Wars? It's um the character Ray, and then she's made up blue like Avatar, and it's Star Wars on Blu-ray. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. I'll go. Dinga. I'll go right uh, All right. So today on the show, uh, we we have a, a lot of interesting developments because a Muggsy kind of said her first word. Uh, I mean, she's babbling now, and we're trying to find out, figure out coherentness. She sounds like a drunken sailor when she's talking. But uh, I'm pretty sure she, she said da-da. Yeah. And then also I complained about a beloved children's show. Well, not a beloved children's show. A, a, a cheap knockoff of a beloved children's show made by cheap Taiwanese animators. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ticket. But uh, first with the da-da. So, Nick, I'm going to play the clip. And, uh, you know, it's not going to show up on your end, but uh, you, you've watched it on the Facebook. All right, mm-hmm. so this is, um, for the rest of us at home, this is Muggsy just chilling, having some lunch, and babbling to herself. And then, um, all of a sudden, <laughs> now that is clearly a da-da. That is clearly a da-da. Now, it, it is more like a da 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 but it's close. I, right? I, I I saw the clip. Um, you know, yeah, I might actually uh, give that one to you. Um, yeah, I, um, I, I think I think she's at that. I think she's uh, I, I think that can be uh, her first word there. Well, see, the thing is that the the night before, there was a clear da da when we're uh, 
sitting and watching TV, and then all of a sudden it's just like, da da, <laughs> and it was so awesome. I I, I jumped up like uh, we had just won the pennant, <laughs> and it was great. I may have even shed a tear because it, it had been a, a long time because I was trying to get her to say, just say Dada, Dada, damn it, come on, Dada, one time. That's incredible. Um, um, touching, uh, touching feeling. I'm assuming uh, there'll be a point though when she's gonna just do nothing but talk, and it's gonna be like, shut up. Yeah, Maybe. except that, no, no, she'll be saying that to me, <laughs> the whole daddy STFU thing. <laughs> Now, the way that I- I've been trying to hammer it home is that uh, Jimmy Fallon has a children's book, which I'm sure took him years to write in concept and development, but it's uh, it- it's pretty touching. I mean, uh, we'll have the link up uh, on the show. Actually, I think it's the, the photo for the blog post, but it's uh, a book called Dada, pretty straightforward. And it's all these various farm animals trying to get their uh, young prodigy, progeny, wh- whichever term you want to put forth. Uh, to say Dada, and the parent and the dad is like Dada, and then the little animal is like Moo for the cow or Ribbit for the frog, and then uh, at the end they all say Dada, yeah. So uh, I read that book to Muggsy, probably that's probably my go-to book. A because it's really easy to 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 read. Uh, it's not like Stephen Colbert wrote it. Yeah, it's a uh, <laughs> it's a. Uh, Pretty easy, straightforward, but it's a good book. Uh, we got the link up on the site, and it's. I'm trying to just drill it into her head. Just da da. Come on. Da da. Da da. Da da. Um, when my nieces were growing up, um, when they reached the talking stage, I noticed it was um, not seeing them as often as I could because I was um, living in the Twin Cities and they were down in uh, Madison. It's almost like they had this own language that um, I didn't understand. But um, are they twins? No, the, um, I, I, I mean, when the nieces had for yeah. um, um, for Nate and Sarah, where they were, only they could understand the the words that, um, that that they were saying. It was it was really interesting. So they're like saying, "Hey." <laughs> Give me some dinner, cunt. Well, um, I'm trying to rem- I'm trying to remember the example because that, that's pretty straightforward, Nick. That's not a that's not really coded. Oh no. Um. Okay. For example, um, the oldest one, Eleanor, when she was at the talking stage, um, I when she was talking to me, um, typically holding something, she, I would hear the words um apple juice, apple juice. I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? And then my brother would correct me, and she, and he would say. She's saying, open, please, open, please. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, it, it was a very interesting thing. No, she's actually saying, I hate juice. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was just, it was something I, I never expected. It was something where I think being the parents and, you know, being with them longer, you can, when the kids are developing their, their speech, I think, you know, the parents get it. They they can hear the... Well, it, it wasn't a spot where... She's actually trying to say open, please. Like, did she have something in her hand, like a jar? Yes. Or yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And so I, so one, I'm a stupid uncle who didn't make any, who didn't make. The well, see, yeah, I, I was trying to think is like maybe uh, your brother. It's like most parents is trying to uh, you know, hear what they want to hear because lots of times when she was uh, Muggsy was just doing her babbling thing, I was like, is that a dada? Is that a father? Did she say father? That's a little bit too advanced, but it sounded like she said father when really she was just making fart noises. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that sounds like father. Because <laughs> I was just waiting for it, and it's a, uh, it, it, it's a spot where I, I know it's stupid, and I I know it's just petty, uh, just being petty jealousy. But it's uh, sometimes when Muggsy gets upset, uh, it, she will sound like she says "mama," you know, like "ah, oh, mama" sort of thing. It's just like, man, come on, man, look for me. Why not me? I I can't breastfeed you, but. Uh, I can help. <laughs> I'm useful. I do things. Which uh, I pilot. I can fly. Well, what age is she at now? Is she at eight months now? Uh, she is eight months today. Jeez. Yeah. Where does time go? Uh, yeah, I know. I'm trying to get her to go out and get a job or at least get an internship somewhere now. <laughs> uh, you might need to hold, postpone that a little bit. Let's make sure she can walk straighter. Hey. Margaret, get down in the mailroom. What, what took so long? 
We didn't even get yesterday's mail. <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, your niece was uh, she she wasn't she was saying apple juice, except uh, it didn't mean open this. It uh, it mean well when she took out the Newport when she was smoking. She's like, "Where's my money?" <laughs> no, she's hey. not smoking. Hey you, hey, you, you know it, it was stupid to bet the Browns to cover. So where's my gosh darn money? No, 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 no. She's not going to be a bookie. No, no. No, she's she's a bookie slash loan shark. Oh, by the way, speaking of loan sharks, uh, I watch Armageddon, right? And oh, God. St- Steve Buscemi, you know, taking out the hundred grand at sixty percent vig from from the loan shark because he's like, hey man, yeah, we're all gonna die. So just gotta have a good time at the strip club. Could you imagine spending a hundred grand at a strip club? Yes, yes, I do. I mean, uh, I although mean, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Although that did seem like a pretty nice place, so uh, I imagine that could go relatively easily. But all right, so could you imagine spending a hundred grand at the KOD? That would be I could buy the KOD with a hundred. Which grand. if um, yeah, if you're listening to this, you're not in the Twin Cities. It's a uh, it's a metro strip club, right? And it's uh, it, it's nice. It, it's okay. It, it's definitely not like trash or anything like that. Except it's um, in in an industrial area of the suburbs and it's across the street from a fire hydrant factory so that's uh yeah so that tells you how uh how ritzy the area is it's 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 a it's really a bar it's it's a chillax bar that's what i love about the kod it's not a hashtag bar with boobs yes (laughs) yes fine we'll go bar with boobs it's just a nice uh you know now when was the last time you've been back oh god it's been Six hours? No, no, shut up. No, no. Um, I think I went there around Christmas. I think was the last time I went. Do they? Oh, uh-huh. I forgot about about that. Yeah, like um, strip club, um, <clears throat> strip clubs and casinos around Christmas and Thanksgiving and uh, Easter. Like always, sad me out because like, man, those people should be with their families, except they're not. Aww. Womp, womp, womp. Now, all right, so one last question. And not to put you on front street, but that's what I do. How much do you think you've spent at, on strip clubs lifetime? In a lifetime? Like um, I think Tyler wants to ask me this. Um, I've tried to estimate um, I would go I'd go anywhere from two to $4,000. What in the in the last fiscal year? No, no, in a, in a lifetime, in a, in a lifetime. I um. Okay, no, I'm gonna go at least. I'm I'm gonna go closer to four. Was it worth it? I'm gonna go say yes. Yes, the answer is yes. Um, I I go maybe seventy five percent of the time. Yes, um, there was. Well, uh, imagine how much uh, it would be if they actually made you pay cover charge. <laughs> yeah, I, I I did have that streak where but, I wasn't but, paying. But yeah, because Nick is so well known at the places that they just he just shows up like Norm and cheers. Everyone's like Norm. I have an unforgettable face. That's why I'm not allowed back in. Where in, everybody uh, knows your anymore. name. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and they're trying to get you to came. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, my God. Segwaying back to kids. Now, what was your <laughs> what was your first word? Um, did, did that ever get relayed to you? Um, no, it did not. But I guess your first word was. Uh... Rice. Uh, and rice. Um, Soy sauce. I'm, tr- I'm trying to think something more offensive. <laughs> no. no, probably not. Um, my first word, um, well, at least over on this side was a nay. Nah. Uh, it's um apparently a nay is the uh Korean equivalent to mom. Aww. Aww. which is kind of weird because how did I learn that word in an orphanage? Because there's no mothers there. I, I bet they use terms like that. also with no mothers, there's no God. Nah, that, that's too far. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta think. You know, I, I was thinking about this the other day, just like having uh, 
some intros introspective moments. It's like, you know, what are the odds of me being born in um, Busan, South Korea, which is the most southernmost city, second largest city in South Korea, uh, getting to Seoul, ending up in an adoption agency, ending up over here, and then suddenly making the most beautiful child in the history of mankind? It's... I would say 50-50. <laughs> Either it happened or it didn't. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, uh, the wife and I were talking. It's like, what would I be doing if I was still over in South Korea? Probably something with robots. You'd probably be working for um, what, what, what's out there as uh, Korea. Was that is that no is that Nokia or what? What cell phone agencies out there? Um, is it, is it no, Nokia is Swedish. Wow, what's I feel pretty much everything else. Samsung. I feel like Samsung might be the big one that's out there. Yeah, like Korean and Japanese. You know, everyone talks about Korea and Japan like they're two foreign countries. Well, they technically are, except they're basically like Minnesota and Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. Because they both hate each other. Or, no, you know what's Korean? Uh, Daewoo. You remember those cars? Oh. Like a Daewoo Lanos. It's like, hey, hey man, you know this car is good because we also make stereos. Like <laughs> actual like in-home stereos. We got the Daewoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I would have worked. I would have worked in marketing. Is that like, you go woohoo with Daewoo? <laughs> I've been pretty good. Super Bowl ad. Uh, uh, all right. So that's um, you know my first words and and whatnot. Now I, I have something to bitch about. All right. Okay. And so uh, when I'm working from home, a lot of times is what I'll do during the day is that you know Muggsy, you know we'll have our playtime, we'll have our snacks and whatnot, but then we're also watching a lot of PBS as a lot of you know parents do when they hang out with their kids during the day uh if they're at home turn on the pbs and you, you know you don't want your kid to watch too much tv but if they're gonna watch something it, it's better than you know the office binge watching the office or you know parks and rec something like that uh where they actually learn something hmm. well, parks and rec is i would i would i would argue the other no okay Aubrey Plaza. Uh, so on, on PBS, they, they have a bunch of great shows. It's a lot of stuff where it's very engaging. Like Margaret will stand right up next to the TV and just like absorb all this stuff. Or maybe she's just attracted to the color like a moth, whatever. Uh, but there's a show called Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, right? And it's a knockoff or a reinvention of Mr. Rogers because obviously – Fred Rogers is dead. R.I.P. Sweater Man. Uh, did you watch Mr. Rogers Never Growing Up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I uh, loved it. I, I think it was my favorite show because I, I loved when um, that uh, that old man just came in, put on a sweater. He was nice. Probably offered you some candy. Told you to get in the van. And all of a sudden, you wake up and you're in Albuquerque. But, yeah, whatever. But I, I liked it when they went on the train into what was that called um the um imagine not uh imaginary imagination land something like that yeah I, you know it was it was actually my least favorite part of the show was i, I what i i love the introduction i loved it when he went on trips and you learned something like like he visited like local neighborhood like like businesses and stuff and like you got to see like there were those clips where like he he went and saw how something was built and like they had a nice little you know, video montage, and then you know it was you know uh, the neighborhood kind of kind of freaked me well, out. Well, kids, this is how I get my sex dungeon built. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And, my... Well, see, the thing is, like uh, now I'm thinking back logically, and you know, that now that I'm a homeowner and think about like construction and composition things like that. So he sent the stupid train in through the you know through the hole in the den or like kitchen uh, like dining room area, right? And you got to think that tunnel went behind the kitchen. So where is Imagination Land? Is it in the back? Is it in the basement near the sex dungeon cellar? Where is it? Okay, wait. Um, I'm on Wikipedia right now. Um, the Neighborhood of Make Believe. That's what it's called. Now, is there soundproofing in there? I, I mean, can they hear King Friday scream? <laughs> and also, what's the deal with, with the, the King's Castle next to train tracks? What is this, Mexico? <laughs> that's like, that's like Family guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all right, so it it was the the king's castle. It was a tree, and there was something over on the right. There was another building there, another person. 
Uh, I forgot who lived there. Is that where Daniel Tiger lived? That right now, who lived in the tree? Now, was Daniel Tiger an original character on the show? Yes, yes. Oh, he was. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I should probably do more research because I, I thought he was uh, invented a whole cloth. No, I, I think I think Daniel Tiger was one of the original um, characters in, in in the neighborhood of Make Believe. Oh, well, that really changes things. But anyways, the the new cartoon is uh, yeah, it's oh, not now now we got pictures up of Daniel Tiger. That thing looks like a wet sock. <laughs> yeah. No, Daniel Tiger's um the old one. It's uh he he looks like a very sad little sock sock puppet. He looks like he's like honestly if the caption was kill me now, I would believe it. And oh, and this one he's wearing a watch. <laughs> for some reason. Um, um I'm 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 reading uh, <clears throat> all the characters right now. It's All right, well n- name a couple off. Okay, um obviously King Friday. Yep. Um which the one I completely recognized as a kid it it is Fred Rogers. It, I think it's him doing mm-hmm. like Fred Rogers voice. It it's nearly um and something I didn't learn till lately was that Fred Rogers did nearly all the voices of the characters of of Imagination Land. Um including Daniel Tiger. Um King Friday's wife was Queen Sarah. Queen Sarah Saturday is what this says, um, and they had a they had a son, um, Prince Tuesday. Oh yeah, Prince Tuesday is in the clip that, that we're about to play. Yep. Yeah, I, I was I was wondering if that was if that was him. So okay, so it looks like he was recycled. There was X the Owl. There was yep, Henry there's owls. Yeah. Oh, okay. There was Henrietta Pussycat. And now, and, and I, then, I don't th- see. I I think they're the sur- board suburban soccer moms probably wrote and is like. How dare you say pussy cat on the air? <laughs> so she's probably gone. I, I remember a cat, although I don't watch it like too closely. And then the last character I remember was a Lady Elaine Fairchild. Oh, Lady Elaine. And she is, uh, the, the Wikipedia page is, she was the antagonist of the storylines. <laughs> antagonist. Because much. I always, I because to, to create somewhat of a drama for this, mm-hmm. uh, imagine uh, for this uh, neighborhood of make believe. I think, I, if I remember correctly, Lady Elaine was always the one who like went against what everyone else wanted to do, and then like she would be the one who had to learn the lesson that you had to learn or something. All right, now we're gonna play a clip here. Uh, it's about a minute. Now this put me off. Now most of Daniel Tiger stuff is. Uh, pretty harmless, and you know, get something out of it. Like learning to share time with your parents when the new baby comes in. the The baby's name is Marker, by the way. A you know, little tiger is cool. And ah, uh, well, well, we'll just play it for listeners. This this really pissed me off. Tigers don't ride on trolley. What kind, of, what kind of advice is that? <laughs> got stomp. This is not Stomp the Yard. It's not a very underrated movie from 2003. You know, I uh, I just think um, it's PBS's... Um, Don't talk over the clip. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Come on, Nick. I know it's... Hashtag pod. It's a... Oh, there's Prince Friday. No, Prince Wednesday. All right, so that was the, the stomp clip, and uh, it, I, you know I, I hate the uh, upright citizens brigade of you know, suburban soccer moms. Except there, there's a lot of backlash on this, and I, I understand this one because it's like if you're telling the kid, "Hey, man, your parents they don't give in to your demands. If your parents have a policy of not negotiating with terrorists, just stomp your just stomp your feet three times, man." Except, there's a whole thing. Now, I, I believe originally it was probably well-intentioned, where it's like, hey, you know, kids, if you suddenly don't get what you want, instead of throwing a tantrum, 
just stomp your feet. Except it never puts in the caveat of then saying, hey, kids, once you stop your feet, shut up. Shut your face. Shut your mouth. Swallow your feelings. Swallow your emotions. It's done. It's done after you stomp your feet. I'm I'm sure it's used to, you know, to, to try to lower the kids, you know, intention of wanting to do a crazy ass tantrum you know no matter what i think kids mostly break down into tantrums Ooh, except if you know they should change songs like if you if you can't get what you want shut the hell up and listen to your parents <laughs> not as catchy actually more catchy if you can't get what you want it's like welcome to real life if you can't get what you want stop being so narcissistic the world doesn't revolve around you so shut the hell up and listen to your parents <laughs> no it's like from the show, uh, not from the clip, but from the actual show, they were in the grocery store, right, Daniel and his dad, and they were shopping from the list, and Daniel wants some ta- some uh, some cookies, and he's like, hey, old man, hey you, I want some cookies, and and the dad's like, uh, cookies aren't on the list, Daniel, so we're not going to get the cookies, and Daniel's like, I'm so mad right now, and then the dad actually encouraged him to stomp his feet, trace, times, why? Why wasn't the dad just like, hey, we're getting to the list. I'm the adult here. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not negotiating with you. I'm very surprised that he just, all right, you're right, you're right. We don't have cookies on the list. They should have been, they should have been, you know, brought about, you know, before they made the list. So he should have known. So I blame the parents on that one. Well, now, is this a spot where they don't allow cookies in the house? Like, they're a gluten-free household, or they don't allow kids any sweets? Because Daniel's going to develop some really weird, like, um, body issues um, and uh, relationship with food. Like, Daniel will be 16, and, you know, he he bought three bags of cookies covertly, and he just shotgunned them in the parking lot, right into the vein. (laughs) Come on, come on. Dan's going to be 400 pounds by the time he graduates high school. That would be like, what happened? Ugh. And then get cookies. Cookies. And cookies. No cookies. Hey, stop your feet three times. I can't because I lost one to diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, how come it's three times? Uh, th- they're promoting kids to have an uneven balance of stomping the feet. So, you know, 50 years down the line, they're going to have arthritis in the right foot because that's their lead foot. And they're like, oh, doctor will be like, what happened? Well, I stomped twice as much as uh, on my right side as I did on my left when I was angry, when I didn't get my way, which continued on to adulthood. Yeah, I'm sure it's just a like counting method. Most kids, most kids who watch probably can only count one, two, three. How about just two? Yeah, it's... Clap your hands twice. Clap. Clap. That sort of thing. Well, when you teach the kids the alphabet, do you say... Hey, let's sweet out A, B. No, you do A, B, C. So. No, let's learn our A, B's, Aryan Brotherhood, because that kid's going to jail. He's going to have to learn the, the codes here pretty soon. <laughs> a, B, Latin Kings. <laughs> I can't believe you went there. Yakuza. <laughs> One Niners. No, all right, so fine. Uh, 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 everything I know about prison, I, I know from Sons of Anarchy. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to prison. Yeah, it's a bad deal, especially if you're Otto, which um, if you if you watch the show, you would know. I, I don't watch the show, so. Yeah, so I, I don't know what we glean from today, but I basically just wanted to bitch about Daniel Tiger. I, I, I don't know. Um, obviously, my, my obviously problem with this is uh, is it is a ripoff for, you know, like of of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Um, Do they even play reruns of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood on PBS anymore? I don't think so i I think probably on somewhere in hulu or amazon they have like the originals which you know you know pbs is always hard up for money as you know they're publicly funded or whatever funded and uh you know they're always asking for donations why not license out the old episodes old episodes of sesame street old episodes of uh mr rogers neighborhood old episodes of other shows why don't they just do that put them on netflix or hulu license them out Get get some coin for just content you got laying around. Did you hear that um, they move um, Sesame Street to HBO or Showtime or something? 
Yeah. Uh, oh, it's not. It's, it's not HBO. PBS, it's not on PBS. Uh, no, anymore? they uh, they just air them on HBO, and then a couple weeks later, those episodes will show up on Sesame Street. That's so weird. Or uh, on PBS, excuse me. That's yeah. so weird. I, 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 I find myself thinking, like, well, are they doing like an adult rated Sesame Street where they can swear now? And well, no, it's just hashtag capitalism. Yeah, you know, HBO is like, hey. Uh, we will fund this since, um, y- you know, it, we can't play uh, uh, Taxi Cab Confessions at at 9 in the morning. And we're trying to expand out. Let's see l- l- who is home. Um, losers Without Jobs. And they we have uh, like 17 HBOs now to do that. But, hey, how about some kids programming? Let's, uh, y- you know, have the nanny and, and the kids uh, check out the premium cable package. So that, that's what they're doing now. And PBS is like, all right, this will take some costs off of our plate. And then we get the content in a couple weeks. Uh, it's a win-win. We'll take it. Huh. And, and plus, you, you got to think that um, PBS is, uh, th- especially their Sesame Street costs are going up and up. Because every single episode has like nine celebrity cameos. And I, I know a lot of them probably want to donate their time, except they probably have to get paid scale because of the whole union stuff. That adds up. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, looking at, on the on the TV every morning, it's just like, oh, there's Tina Fey and Donald Glover on Sesame Street counting things with the Cookie Monster. Why aren't they counting with the count? I don't know. I'm confused now. Why aren't they counting with the count? <laughs> Why is Big Bird slightly slow? <laughs> I, I I've had that theory since uh, since I was a kid. Now it might be an evil theory, but I think like. Either Big Bird's mother drank while he was uh, in the womb, or uh, that kid was eating like lead paint popsicles, <laughs> drinking lead water from uh, Flint, Michigan. Too soon. Yeah, that was too soon. I'm sorry, all our Flint, Michigan too soon. listeners. Um, what is your favorite PBS show? Before we take off, uh, Nova for Muggsy. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Downton Abbey. Which is a great show, which Muggsy could watch. Nightline. No. Um, pro- oh, Super Y is good or Little Einsteins. Okay, okay. I, I... Although those little Einstein kids are so damn smug. They're, they're flying around without supervision in their stupid spaceship. And they're like, hey, I know Bach. I'm better than you. La, 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 la. Those and Beethoven. don't tell me that those stup- those four stupid kids aren't farting in the trombones. Because <laughs> you know that ginger kid likes to get weird. <laughs> I gotta catch up on all my all my PBS shows. Um, I'm missing out. I. Um... Well, the nice thing is that there's a, a PBS app uh, on the Roku box, and then there's also the, you know, they're streaming on Netflix and and Hulu a lot of the shows. So you just put that thing on and. You're le- you're ready to go, and I actually learn something every, every time I watch uh, like Little Einsteins. That's good. I think that's the most important part of of any of these PBS shows and kids watching them early in the morning. You know, before getting ready for daycare or school. You know how a lot of parents um, have it. Now, uh, let's see here. Ooh, um, so of course Little Einstein. It's like every show nowadays that has to have a diverse cast. Uh, otherwise, uh, parents suburban soccer moms are writing angry letters. So it's got a redhead named Leo, a redhead a white kid named Leo, uh, a, a black kid named Quincy, I believe, and uh, Annie is his, uh, is Annie is Leo's uh, little blonde haired sister. And then there's June, who's Asian, except she's not so Asian uh, enough to think, and she doesn't have a ethnic sounding name. So you know the Latinos can be like, hey, she's Mexican. Yeah, I see what they did there. You know who's not represented. White, non-ginger males. <laughs> they need to write in. They need to write in. How come there is no brown-haired white gentleman with a chiseled jaw? We are underrepresented. In what? <laughs> is what they would say. What's his name going to be? Aiden, Jaden, Caden? Aiden, Jaden, Caden on a mic? <laughs> a mic. Oh, ooh. I, I was thinking about this the other day. What, what's just a good name for a dude that doesn't get used a lot? Hmm. What's missing in our lexicon, Nick? A Steve. I don't think we have a Steve in our lives. Oh yeah, that's true. 
Just a good old Steve. Steve-O. Oh. Steve-O. <laughs> Steve-O. Duh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what we accomplished today, except I said that after every episode. I think we accomplished a lot. I think we talked a lot about um, uh, my strip club habits and uh, PBS shows, I think. Strip club, PBS, first words. Yeah, everything. I think it was... Uh, Mr. Rogers has a sex dungeon. <laughs> he does not. Except where is it? Is it in the land of make-believe? <laughs> I don't know. Or ma- land of magical imagination? You know, that's what he calls it. The room was he was like a sniper in like World War II. It was crazy. If you look up stuff, yeah. Really? He was Barry Pepper? <laughs> Saving Private Ryan? I still have to see that. Yeah. What? Yeah, I haven't seen that. We should... Get it on Amazon. Click through Dad Mode Pod and everything like that. Nick, what's coming up from you? Um, I'm trying to create my own podcast. The Datacast, yeah. <laughs> the Nick Asun Podcast. Um, I got... I got a fake song. Twitter account and Facebook page kind of set up. Um, I want to talk, you know, general pop uh, culture stuff, um, follow, you know, current trending news and try to get in depth with that type of fun stuff and, you know, just entertaining things. Uh, you want you want to talk gen pop, so again with the prison talk. <laughs> Nick, if you went to jail, you'd have to join a gang, except I don't know which uh, gang you would join. I don't think there's a big Filipino gang presence in the, in the prison system. It's... There is. It's called the laundry room. <laughs> you, you would you would have to join half the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they like my other half. Part part time, like every other day, like Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, the show is available on iTunes and also on Stitcher. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Dad Mopod, uh, Nick at Nickasun one word, or me at Andy Carlson Show. Very straightforward. Very easy to do. Uh, website is DadMopod.com, but. For Nickerson, I'm Andy Carlson saying be a man, be a father, and go dad mode. We'll talk to you next week. Think the episode you just heard is worth a dollar? Well, send it our way. Visit dadmodepod.com slash support to find out how. Be a man, be a father. Go dad mode. The music is created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, visit soundcloud.com slash Deeb.